Hello world, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to have you. Is that a party hat on your head? Yes, thank you for asking. Are you drinking a nice Moscato from Henry Vineyards back in Douglas County? Or are you drinking water? I'm dehydrated all the time. I only drink coffee. So a lot of you have been asking me in the comments, why are you, why are you ready to party? What's this about? What are you celebrating? And I just wanted to like set the record straight. The Jordan Cove pipeline is basically dead once and for all. And I think that is a reason to celebrate, don't you? You might be like, what are you talking about? And I would say to you, the news is very sad. I think you should take any reason to celebrate that you can get. And I think that you would agree, am I right? because my audience has alcoholics. Jordan Cove pipeline, taking natural gas from the Rockies of Canada, transporting it through a pipeline across so much of Oregon out of a Coos Bay terminal and shipping it to Asia. Why is that bad, you might be asking. Some of you might be like, got it, I'm on board, I hate it. But some of you might be like, I am not yet convinced. Well, pour yourself some water, some of your local vineyards wine, a Bud Light, whatever you are privy to, a White Claw. I'm here to tell you why you should be celebrating the death of the Jordan Cove pipeline. And Brady's here too and he's celebrating, but he's not drinking right now because he had a really hard weekend and he chased some ducks in some ponds and he's just, he's quite exhausted, so. The first horrible thing about the Jordan Cove pipeline is eminent domain, honey, they're out here crossing people's lands and uh, they're gonna take it. People in rural Oregon, and I think rural communities across the country are like, no, 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 no. The government's gonna come in and take their land? Mm. You cross the wrong human being. <laughs> Speaking of crossings, the Jordan Cove Pipeline crosses so many water sources, rivers, streams, wetlands, more than 300. If you know anything about pipelines, it's that, honey, they leak. Oh, they leak, honey. Talking about my Tuesday night. That could be good or that could be bad. So I'm leaving that joke in there. I'll roll with it. That's wild to me that we would just like allow this Canadian company to come in and just like put some really gross pipelines there and like trudge up the land and then mess it all up and then warm up the water, which kills fish. And we're just okay with that? I don't think so. We live on a fault line. I don't know if we live on a fault line, but the really big one, the earthquake is coming. When that terminal crumbles, honey, that's all gonna leak into our air and the ocean. And we're just supposed to accept that? No. No, we shouldn't. We really shouldn't. Do you have an earthquake preparedness kit? If you, for some reason, are like me and you really care about what happened, the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality has to approve their, wa their like water quality stuff. They have to prove in their construction and production of their pipeline and natural gas terminal that it wouldn't have adverse effects on Oregon's water and that's really important to Oregon our economy and like so much of our food and wildlife god bless Oregon's natural resources am I right the reason that it isn't officially like 100% dead is that Hamina I don't even know if that's how you say the company's name and honestly I don't care is that like Paloma's little sister a new crazy white people name no it's the name of this evil company they could file more paperwork and like maybe like prove that it isn't do we drink at funerals yes Yes, we do, especially if it's the funerals of our enemies. And we don't get invited to many of those, so we gotta, t you know, soak it up when we can. Speaking of soaking it up, the Jordan Cove Pipeline saw a record-breaking number of public comments during the, you know, federally mandated public comment period. Department of Environmental Quality has never seen this many public comments for this particular type of permit ever in the state of Oregon. 42,000 public comments were filed. Speaking of the public comment period, this company is supposed to have public hearings in each county that the pipeline crosses. But every single time they went to Jackson County, which is where Medford is, they were faced with hundreds of protesters every time. And if you've been to Medford or Jackson County, you know the type of people that are down there. Um, I love y'all. I really do. I feel like a nice, like, warm spot in my heart. However, y'all are also a lot sometimes, and so am I, and I accept that, and uh, there's a lot of you in me, if you know what I mean. I'm just kidding. I don't think I've had sex with anyone from Jackson County. Not on purpose, but I really don't think I have. Have I? So they had public hearings in every single county except Jackson County, and it was because every single time they went down there, hundreds of Jackson County people turned up, and they were like, I heard you're trying to take our land across the Rogue River. What the fuck? And so they were just like, we're just not gonna have a, we're just not gonna have a hearing down there because we know, we know how they feel. The next thing, in March of 2016, the Jordan Cove pipeline was fully like rejected. They did review it again in December and they were like, okay, well, we'll, 
we'll reconsider because we like legally have to. And then they found out after further review, no, it was still a no. It was still a hard pass in the Jordan Cove pipeline. And Donald Trump was elected and he was like, Ferk, ah, you know, we should really start approving more of these projects to, you know, export fossil fuels because his best friends are fossil fuel people. As it is when you are rich and wealthy in America. So Ferk was like, hey, Jordan Cove, Pamina, you should really like resubmit and like maybe we'll reconsider. <laughs> and then they did. And that's why we're in this mess. If you're a rural Oregonian and you need another reason to be like, maybe this is not a good project. It was then supported by the Portland Chamber of Commerce. You want to know who's on the Portland Chamber of Commerce? Nike, Intel, all these like rich CEO people who do not even go to Southern Oregon. They don't even drive through Southern Oregon to get to like San Francisco. They just fly right there. And they're on the PDX Chamber of Commerce and they feel the need to make a public comment and say that they support the pipeline. Who are they convincing? Who looks at the Portland Chamber, Chamber of Commerce meddling in Southern Oregon affairs and it's like, you're right. I trust you that you're making decisions in the interest of those rural Oregonians and not in the interest of your pocket that is already so big. And then through a recent analysis, we found that the Jordan Cove pipeline, if it was approved, would be Oregon's biggest polluter to climate change. That's really weird because we have 12 years to shift our entire economy away from fossil fuels if we want to like save the world. Billions of dollars spent on this project that they could have just stopped. And what was it even worth? Billions and billions in fossil fuel exports and a couple hundred jobs created? That is not even, like, it's not even built yet. But they're like, we're gonna keep investing this money when we fully just cannot. Like, people will die. I don't feel bad that after billions of dollars in all those years, that this pipeline might hopefully be dead. I'm raising my glass to that because the Green New Deal is upon us because it literally has to be. It's like, we literally only have 12 years, so you get on board figuring out what way you want to make that work where we all are happy or we die. And in Oregon, we have the Clean Energy Jobs Bill, which is super, super awesome, and I'll talk more about that in future videos. This is like a huge win for us as a state. I really hope that the Jordan Cove pipeline stays dead this time, don't you? And so as if we were ladies at brunch, honey, I'll drink to that, will you? Cheers. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm gonna keep on making content like this and so much more, including a party hat tutorial. Do you wanna learn how I made this party hat? I'll tell you, but I will not tell you how I fastened it to my head. I will see you all next time and remember, every day is a chance to get better.